We've heard from Christine about the approach that the University of Greenwich is taking in their application of learning analytics, and this is clearly an exciting project at Greenwich, one, as Christine says, that's in a critical but early stage. Now, Christine emphasized her focus um, on improving student retention uh, and student success, which she'd share in common with many other institutions, with a secondary product of enhancing the student experience. If we step back and reflect a little bit though, we could see there could be a clash here uh, because we've also heard from teachers at Greenwich how their primary interest in learning analytics is providing their students with a great experience, emphasizing the student teaching dimension above issues like retention. That's actually a healthy difference of perspective because we really do want teachers to be focused on teaching and student experience and we want senior administrators focused on issues like retention. The point that it illustrates here is the importance of alignment, the importance of having an institutional-wide vision for learning analytics that incorporates all different points of view and brings them onto the same page. And clearly, Greenwich is moving towards the attainment of that sort of holistic perspective. Christine made a number of points which have been based on Greenwich's experience of applying learning analytics and they're very valuable to us because they represent a combination of the theory of learning analytics which has been tested in an institution, big and complex organisation, that's taking on board these new sorts of techniques. One point she mentioned was about the importance of data literacy. Now clearly from the point of view of the university's senior managers, all this data has to join up in ways that can be used. That translates into the everyday practice of teachers uh, across the organization. And we heard from a number of teachers about their questions and some of their concerns about the basic data literacy questions. And that's understandable. As they use more and more applications of different sorts of caliber and different sorts of demands, ensuring up-to-date data literacy on the ground in the classroom is going to be vital for the ongoing integrity of learning analytics. Everything a student does is recorded. When I was a student, there was no expectation that I attend lectures. In mathematics, in my opinion, some people learn a lot from lectures. Some people actually learn much better from printed notes, books, other sources. And some of our students have actually said they don't attend lectures because they get confused. When they read the notes, they understand them. When they go to a lecture, they don't understand them. So I have a lot of sympathy with students who choose not to attend lectures for good reasons. And I worry that sometimes we're using measurements which don't really record important things. We're giving perhaps more importance to attendance than it really merits. A second thing that Christine mentioned was the question of how that data is pulled together and represented. In other words, the sort of dashboards, tables, uh, visualizations that an institution routinely uses. She made an interesting point here. If you're a new institution starting up for the first time, you've got a clean slate. But if you've been a while, around for a while, you're already using a whole form of representation of outputs. And we heard from some of the lecturers at Greenwich how challenging that can be. They have a huge range of dashboards, of screens, of programs, of sources, and sometimes it becomes so frustrating trying to find where that representation is that the teacher is tempted to simply give up and move on because it's so difficult to get through that. So Christine's point there is again very important for complex organizations as learning analytics are applied and matured. I think it's very interesting talking about the amount of data that's available and how it's represented. I think that there's very little available in terms of some sort of unified or coherent presentation, portal or dashboard to, to the data that you're looking for. Um, the way that I use it personally, and the way that I know most of my colleagues use the data, is to wonder about something and then go looking for it. And it's, it's like going to a jumble sale and having a turquoise jumper in mind. And you know that, that search could be through mountains and mountains of stuff until you find it or maybe you don't and that is one of the biggest problems you know that the information is out there but your patience is very very limited they say don't they that we won't wait for more than 15 seconds for a page to load before we click on the next link and it's the same i think 
that same psychology with looking for the data. Well, you must be able to tell where, whether so-and-so has accessed this. Click, click, click. Oh, I can't see it. Never mind. We'll worry about that later. And then thirdly, she made the point about the value of discussion across the institution as a whole. And in a way, this is one of the most important points. She was making the point from her perception that introducing learning analytics at Greenwich has promoted very healthy discussion across the full range of staff of the university, a culture of continual improvement. And we could see that in the discussions that we had with academic staff at Greenwich University, how this culture of debate is promoting innovation, promoting discussion, firing off new ideas, making disagreements apparent, because often disagreements are themselves a primary source of creativity, and joining students into that discussion as well, so that they become part of crafting this learning experience using the richness of the data sources that we now have available. I think it's really important uh, for student leaders and university leaders to be called collaborative workers in this. Uh, so it's not a case of just having an open channel and having the communication. I think the action needs to be built upon from students giving their feedback and then leaders obviously giving their feedback. Um, I think that's the only way possible to get this in the right balance to make sure students don't feel like it's something where they're being watched and it is something beneficial to their academic experience.